Welcome to worship at Browns Point United Methodist Church. My name is Reverend Katie Klosterman, and it is my joy to welcome you. Whether you're a first time visitor or have been attending Browns Point UMC your whole entire life, know that you belong here. We're excited to build a community of faith with you um, as we become the hands and feet of Christ, the hands of love, the feet of service. And so this Sunday, we are concluding our sermon series on uh, connecting to God's creation. For this service, you're going to want to grab a bowl of water so we can do a reaffirmation of baptism and to remind ourselves that it is through baptism, through the initiation into God's holy community, that we are deeply rooted and grounded in God's creation. For water is a gift of life. It's the source of everything. So grab that uh, bowl, as will be later on in the service, but just a little bowl so that we can bless it and then it can bless you as well. So let's just take a deep breath in. Let everything that happened this week roll off our shoulders. The racing thoughts that may have kept us up last night, let them just fade so you can be fully present to your God who is being fully present to your life. Please join me for the call to worship. Have you not known? Our God is the everlasting God, creator of the ends of the earth. Have you not heard? God does not faint or grow weary. Have you not known? God's understanding is unsearchable. Have you not heard? God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Have you not known? Those who wait for God will renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. We come to connect. We come to know. Thanks be to God.
Gracious God, center us in this moment. Let the urgency wash over us for the need to change our ways to care for your creation. Help us reorient our steps. Change our choices. Slow us down to hear your creation crying out for us, for help, for healing, for restoration. Help us slow down so that we can see it as a gift that we are meant to cherish every single day. We ask this in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the people of God said, Amen. to be outside and to enjoy the sunshine together. We love to go for walks. And as we think about taking care of God's creation, you know, um, it's easy to think about how beautiful the world is, but then I think it gets a little harder and that's the call to faith is to take care of the earth, keep it beautiful, not just for ourselves, but for everyone, uh, for all living creatures. 
just as the way God intended. And so uh, we think about the future generations, not just Kaylin's generation, but all children and all generations. How do we take care of creation so they can enjoy it like we've enjoyed it? Um, but it means uh, it's a lot of work and it can feel overwhelming at times, but we can do it. Um, and the reason why we can do it is because God's with us. God's in the beauty of uh, creation. And so God shows up and so uh, we show up too. So let's show up together, huh? And do our part to take care of God's creation. Amen? Amen. Gracious God, grant that we may see the world as good, just as you declared it good, and help us to love it and care for it to your glory. Now grant us the openness to hear your good news through the reading of this scripture and the preaching of your word. Amen. Our reading from the Old Testament is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 27 through 31. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. reading from the gospel according to Matthew. Consider then the parable of the farmer. Whenever people hear the word about the kingdom and don't understand it, the evil one comes and carries off what was planted in their hearts. This is the seed that was sown on the path. As for the seed that was spread on rocky ground, this refers to people who hear the word and immediately receive it joyfully. Because they have no roots, they last only for a little while. When they experience distress or abuse because of the word, they immediately fall away. As the seed that was spread among thorny plants, this refers to those who hear the word, but the worries of life and the false appeal of wealth choke the word, and it bears no fruit. As for what was planted on good soil, this refers to those who hear and understand and bear fruit and produce, in one case yield of 100 to 1, in another case yield 60 to 1, and in another case yield 30 to 1. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hi. I'm Steve Lane. Imagine you walk into a small, bare-walled room except for two large digital clocks hanging on opposite walls. One clock has a number on it somewhere in the millions that continues to tick up quickly. That clock has a label that reads, Pandemic Deaths. The other clock has 1.5 degrees on the clock face and is labeled greenhouse gas average temperature increase. Which of those two clocks would you have an immediate concern about? Maybe even an adverse reaction to? Which clock would you plead 
and implore to just stop. I'm guessing the pandemic clock. That clock represents actual human loss of life, tragedies and pain that you yourself might have experienced with a loved one, friend, or someone you know. The other clock on the wall has a number on it that just sits there passively and certainly hasn't changed since you've been in the room. You can't be totally consumed by that pandemic clock. You just can't. So you begin to think about what the world has done to this point to help slow that pandemic clock down. In some countries, quick action, listening to the science, hard lockdowns, and personal safety precautions have given a chance for virus suppression or elimination. That has resulted in businesses flourishing again and onto the path of economic recovery. Producing a vaccine for this virus was created in a very short time, an almost miraculous timeline. Many countries in the world are experiencing good success in vaccine distribution and getting people shots. So as you do a little fist pump thinking about those pandemic successes parts of the world have experienced, you're suddenly almost certain that pandemic clock on that wall is ticking up slower and slower as you watch it. You're about to leave that small room with the clocks when it walks, when walks in a small, slight teenage girl. She looks you in the eye and introduces herself as Greta Thunberg. Now it dawns on you, thanks to social media and possibly TV, that she is the 19-year-old Swedish climate activist. You remember hearing that she began dedicating her life to the environment at the age of 15 when she skipped school one day and spent her time instead sitting in front of the Swedish parliament building on a climate strike, vowing to continue until the Swedish government met the carbon emissions target agreed by world leaders in the 2015 Paris Accord. She looks at the two clocks, looks back at you, and says, if you want any future at all, you need to pay very close attention to the 1.5 degree clock. You ask yourself, why would she say that? That number hasn't changed. She says to you, hmm, I know what you're thinking. So here's what I know about that clock. Unchecked, that 1.5 degrees will rise to three degrees by the end of the century. And soon after, this world will not be sustainable. Not sustainable for humans, all other living creatures, and our planet Earth in general. Greta looks away from you, and a heavy silence fills the room. The finality of her statement takes your breath away, and you focus on those clocks again. So let's compare the two clocks. Reducing carbon emissions is similar to the vaccine for the pandemic. We achieve herd immunity when a majority of the world's people get shots. We achieve a livable and a thriving earth when the world's people make drastic and immediate reductions in greenhouse gases. Like the pandemic, listening to climate change science and taking action will put us on a better path for the future. Technology certainly helped in our pandemic fight. Technology is also now beginning to address climate change. Examples include restoring forests, our Earth's lungs, to a healthier state, building air capture plants that scrub carbon dioxide out of the air, 
livestock dietary changes to address methane gas, more emphasis on renewable energy such as solar and wind, wastewater reuse, building redesigns, developing high efficiency batteries for electric vehicles, extracting hydrogen from water, and the list goes on. Some of the challenges we have faced with the global pandemic run similar to climate issues. In some cases, the two are interchangeable. Both have had more impact on minority and poor populations across the world. That has caused human migration, which will exacerbate risks to humanity's secure, human security and negatively affect economic stability for all countries. Deforestation has also accelerated animal migrations that can cause higher risk of infectious diseases. People who live in places with poor air quality are more likely to become sick or die from COVID-19 and climate change. And also, like the pandemic, there is a section of the world population who don't recognize climate change as a threat or even an issue to consider and thus will not be participating in seeking any solutions. As Greta leaves you, you begin to ponder again what successes and challenges we are living through as it relates to COVID-19. It has been a threat to human life that has been immediate, upfront, and very personal. It has been de devastating. But the notion that dramatically higher temperatures seem far off in the future doesn't make them less of a problem. Actually, the science is now telling us that the climate change problem will be a threat multiple times what we experienced in the pandemic if it goes unchecked. Well, you now better understand the significance of the climate clocks on the other wall. It's critical we keep that clock number at 1.5 degrees and that it never, ever moves up. Our efforts need to be accelerated now. Before Greta Thunberg left, her last words to you were, we can't afford to just sit around and talk about energy ideas. We must act now. Hope comes from actions. As part of the Methodist doctrine on creation care and as a steward of this earth, what can you do now to fight climate change and preserve our future? Well, here's a few actions I have found. <clears throat> Seriously consider doing one. Or doing some. Or doing all. Or doing all and finding more. So educate yourself on creation care and the science related to climate change. Speak up. Power your home with renewable energy. Weatherize. Invest in energy efficient appliances. Reduce wastewater. Buy LED bulbs. Pull the plugs. Use energy wisely. Eat for a climate stable planet. Green your commute. Consume less. Waste less. And enjoy life more.
Let us pray, bringing all of the joys, all of the concerns that we share together in community and that we've also lifted up silently to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we pray for our earth, for its healing, for its restoration. We pray that the word of God has taken root in our hearts so that we as a community of faith can bear good fruit, fruit that commits to changing our ways, to doing what's right for our world, for the time is now. You have created us for this moment. Let it be so according to your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, who are seeking healing in their lives, especially those battling cancer, including Carol Novotny, David Warren, and Julie Fieser, and for those who need healing in their lives this day, we continue to pray for Todd Peterson and for Joanne Hunt and Jerry Thorpe. But Lord, we also include all who are battling COVID-19. And God, while we rejoice and give thanks that many have received the vaccination and life seems to be turning a corner so we can get back to normal, we know that there are so many, so many who are still battling this disease, including the country of India. So we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, we come to you this morning asking for peace in situations of conflict. At the forefront of our minds right now is the Holy Land, as Israelis and Palestinians are fighting and killing each other once more. Lord, we pray for your peace, for reconciliation, for healing, for blood has stained your holy land once more, violating your good creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. But God, we also pray for anyone who's experiencing conflict right now in their lives, whether that is relational conflict, estrangement, isolation, we pray for healing of those relationships as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, we continue to pray for the healing of our country when it comes to the sin of racism. For there is so much we have to learn, O oh Lord. It is entrenched too deeply so deep at times we are not sure where we fully understand how deeply rooted it is in the systems and the policies. So God, transform us as a community of faith to understand and to fight racism in these policies and in these systems. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, we continue to pray for our LGBTQIA brothers and sisters who continually seek to be seen as full human beings and to have the same rights and equality. And then as a reconciling congregation, help us, O oh Lord, take the next step to live out our identity of a truly inclusive church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for all of our brothers and sisters who are experiencing homelessness, 
those who are on the verge of losing their jobs, our brothers and sisters who are living in chronic poverty. Once more, come to us, O Lord, as the church, followers of Jesus, who are called to care for the least, the lost, and the lonely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, you see us hurting. You know our pains. You see our joys, and we give thanks for your blessings in our lives. So we lift all of these prayers up to you as one body and one voice, praying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we bring a portion of the gifts that God has blessed our lives with and give them back to God, acknowledging all of the incredible ways that God has blessed our lives. So let us now give generously to our God, who we know will take any gift we offer to God, bless it, multiply it, so that we can bring about God's kingdom of love, peace, joy, freedom, and grace here on earth. So let us give. Great one, through the offering of our gifts, we acknowledge our reliance on you. We pray for your blessings on these gifts that they may be used for your glory throughout the world, wherever our influence reaches. May they care for the sick, feed the hungry, and bring justice to the oppressed. May we use all we have to care for your creation. Amen. At this time, we want to invite you to participate in the recommitment to caring for God's creation, an affirmation of our baptism. We ask God to bless the water and make it holy for our nourishment, reminding us that we are loved and called to be part of God's community through baptism. As Christians, baptism is a sign of our essential identity as God's people and our commitment to a life lived in the love of Christ as stewards of creation. We are baptized into the river of God, which flows from one end of scripture to another, from the Garden of Eden in Genesis to the vision of the new creation in Revelation. Let us remember that our baptism by water connects us deeply with all of creation, immersing us in the story of God. If you're comfortable doing so, I want to invite you to remove your shoes or socks and root your bare feet into the floor or the ground beneath you. And now let us just close our eyes for a moment, take a comfortable stance, and breathe slowly and deeply. Feel the living earth underneath us. Notice the breath of God in the air as it soars through us. And now let us read together from the liturgy. 
A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 through 2. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. As the waters were used by God to bring life to the void earth, the same waters nurture, cultivate, and satisfy our bodies, our minds, and our souls. As we immerse ourselves in the birthing waters, we remind ourselves that though we are formed from the dust of the earth, we are filled and refreshed by the waters of this earth, the waters which revive us again and again. A reading from the book of Genesis. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures. No plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up. But a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east. Our creation story teaches us that the hydrological cycle is not something outside us. We are a part of it. As the Creator used their hands to form and shape the earth, we see that God's creation isn't always fixed. As the, As the master, master artisan, God, God created beauty in flow and in cycle. As the water falls from the sky and touches our skin, we are touched by divine grace. As the water flows throughout the earth, we are reminded of God's promise. We are nourished by these gifts, these divine gifts, and find solace in renewal. We accept the renewal of living water, today, tomorrow, forever, as a reminder of God's continual blessings every day. A reading from the book of Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. Jesus starts his ministry, his healing ministry, by being united with the Holy Spirit, only after a deep submersion into his beloved homeland, grounding him in the storied Jordan watershed of his ancestors, through which God of Israel was still speaking. Do we know the stories of our own watershed, the stories of both faithfulness and violation held by land and waters of our home. God, help us move from an experience of the sacred water of our baptism to see the sacredness of all water by especially protecting our local waters of Commencement Bay and the Puyallup River. Help us to be born into a new relationship with these waters that you have called us to care for so that all, all living things may flourish. And now we remember how our baptism calls us into an interdependent relationship with all of creation, which starts in our own watershed. We invite you to receive a blessing of the waters of your home upon your forehead. Remember that in baptism we receive the promise of Christ's living water, and the Spirit we are led to work toward the promise of a new and transformed creation. Remember your baptism into God's life-giving waters as you understand your place in creation. Now, renewed in the remembrance of our baptism and revived by the Spirit, let us continue to be active stewards and protectors of all creation. And the people of God said, Amen.